Hey, welcome back to Content Marketing World Chatter, uh, brought to you by Riot Studio. I'm here with Michael Brenner, and we're taking on the difficult and challenging topic that no one wants to talk about, the appropriate way to sit at a chair during an interview. <laughs> Michael, D could do you, you tell cross us? legs or, or that lean a little bit I like you doing, you've nailed the cockiness. lean forward. It looks very, yeah. very intense. I'm so gonna, we can I'm go here and then lean back, maybe add a little spicoli to it. I'm just gonna to chill, it. yeah. yeah. We actually, we brought in probably some of the most uh, uh, least uh, ergonomical chairs just to try to make our guests feel uncomfortable. I think you're just getting old. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Listen, we're going to have an orthopedic surgeon come by afterwards <laughs> and he'll crack your back and then I'll walk on it. So massage. we'll do that during the interview. Sounds good. Uh, we, it took us about six months to get through your publicist to get you on the show. Busy. So is that what it is? <laughs> tell, tell us about what kind of, uh, is most of the consulting business you do, is that coming from your ROI uh, work? I, I, honestly, the, the biggest question I get asked to help solve is, is help us document what the hell it is we're trying to do with content. Uh, everybody, every organization I work with, they have tons of it. They don't have a shortage of it. They just have no strategy, no wrapper around why they should be doing what they're doing. And so ROI comes in at the end, and, and I, I am doing a lot of work on that, but the first question, the biggest challenge is generally help us figure out what we should be doing with, when it comes to content. Uh, yeah, when I was at Cisco, we brought you in to straighten us out on that. I, I tried, I, yes. I, I, I'm still working. That was, look, your still presentation got rave reviews, by the way. Thank you. And uh, a few negative comments on Yelp, but <laughs> we're gonna clean that up. I think those are just some angry people who didn't like your tie. Why don't you have a tie right? This is the only time I've seen you not in a tie. Yesterday was tie day. Today is not casual day. shirt, but always with the pocket square. Actually, Sarah, can we get a clip on or something from wardrobe? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, great. Good. Uh, I want to. I want to ask you about an announcement I read yesterday in the Wall Street Journal. New CMO position. Uh, New You're York Times on. front page. Uh, yes. 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 Man of yes. the year. That's right. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, what are the biggest trends happening in in the world of marketing? And um, I think personalization is definitely one. I think we're seeing a lot of marketers look at how to tap into the, the experts that in, are living inside their companies and employer branding and are we a good place to work. That's definitely a trend. The hottest trend that I've seen in the last 12 months is AI. And so, and, and the question I've always asked my clients is, what are you gonna do when the, the robots start telling us what content to create? You know, what's the role of strategy and, and how are we gonna start to make sure that we, we bring humanity, you know, across to the, to the clients that we're trying to, to, you know, new customers are trying to gain. And so um, this company uh, called Concured that has yes. a pretty interesting AI platform that drives and informs uh, insights across the content marketing strategy process. And so I've joined them as a part-time CMO for now. And I'm really excited to see where it's gonna go. I think uh, AI is, is really gonna, gonna play a bigger role in the world of marketing in the future. Well, congratulations. Yeah, pretty excited. Uh, now, is that what you're doing, building robots? I am, in the basement, I'm, yes. World domination was one of the areas I wanted to get into, and, and yes, so robotics is, that one is- That's one of the goals important. you wrote down when Joe it, told you to write down goals yesterday? Since I was eight, yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you're the right man for it, but I'd wear a tie, is the most <laughs> suggestion. I'm sorry, I got a shift seat. I can't hold that pose anymore it's in this too chair. Intense. It's too intense. So I went, Sarah, can we get a bean bag in here or something? Maybe a, maybe a futon? <laughs> Anyway, look, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I'm, I'm glad the folks at Riot set us up here mm -hmm. with some uh, nice furniture. And you get to keep one of the chairs after the interview. That's, that's I'm great. not supposed to announce that yet, but of course you got to get it on the, uh, you have to carry it on on the airplane. <laughs> I'm the big winner? Yes, nice. you are the big winner. You're the big winner. We've got a washer and dryer set back here. You don't get to keep that, but we need you to move it. So that would be great. No problem. That'd be great. We you met, you and I, this is our, uh, what is this, our 18th anniversary? It, it is. Uh, to the day yeah, when you right. and I met up in Boston and had uh, a seafood dinner. We did. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Fond memories of that. That's right. And our love has grown it, it, it has. slowly in, in a very uncomfortable day. way, to be honest with you, <laughs> if I'm saying, you know. Hey, what about uh, yesterday you spoke on ROI? Mm -hmm. What were what, what, some of the key questions that came up from folks while you were there? Yeah, so uh, I've spoken here six years in a row on content marketing ROI. And I've feel like I haven't gotten the formula right on how to present it the right way because ROI is a math calculation and it's a pretty simple one. It's only, you know, revenue minus investment divided by investment. I've tried to explain that so many different ways and I feel like I haven't hit the mark um, because it's really about the way we communicate why we're doing what we're doing with marketing 
and the content we create, yeah. that really establishes the foundation for being able to show then ultimately we met the goal and here's the proof points with the math. And so this year I really tried to focus a little bit on creating that culture of empathy inside an organization that's focused on delivering value to customers. I know you and I talk about empathy all yeah. the time. It, we need cultures of empathy inside our organization. Most executives think we should be talking about who we are, what we sell, and why we're better. And that just doesn't work anymore. So, so in order to show ROI, we have to start actually showing our customers we really do care about them. It sounds counterintuitive, but it's the only way it works. Right. And so I presented that yesterday. I, Gotten some good feedback so far. Like you said, there was a Yelp review that was a little bit negative, but you're going to take care of that for me. Well, that, that was actually from a robot. Oh, well, there you go. To be fair. Yeah. So, yeah. I wouldn't worry about yeah. it. Look, how, how do you, I, when, I, when I try to talk to organizations about putting, using humor and trying to humanize the brand with some, with some levity and self-deprecation, a lot of what I think are the most important metrics are, are not quantitative, but the qualitative metrics. Like if you, get, if you get a tweet from an analyst or someone in the press that says something kind about the brand or warms up to that, I mean, I think that's a good thing. Is there, and I think that's a powerful thing and maybe even more powerful than some of these metrics that we're tracking. And is there a way to calculate that into the ROI? There is, I mean, I think there's engagement measures that like, you know, you can see, um, for example, a, a video. You know, a video that's funny gets viewed a video with a real human talking about the challenges they face in, in their everyday, maybe it's serious and maybe it's funny, is way more engaging you know, from any different measure, yeah. whether it's dwell time or you know, the percentage of the video that's been viewed or the number of times it's been shared. There's plenty of metrics that I think show that. Um, I actually think you, the, the metrics do show that humanized content, humorous content, uh, you know, it, w we don't like share videos of cats that aren't funny we share videos of cats that are funny. And so I think brands should learn from the kinds of content that we're all competing with to create the content that people actually want to consume. It's often not talking head videos. Yep, boom. All right, we're out of time, but there you have it. Spend more time on cat videos. Cat videos. Michael Brenner, thanks for joining us, Thank sir. Thank you, Tim. All right, good to see you. Always a pleasure.